Good afternoon. I apologize for the delay. Um, obviously, we are uh, watching and monitoring very closely um, a very uh, fluid and dynamic situation. So uh, I will uh, do my best to answer um, some of your immediate questions. We may take some of those, again, as uh, events, uh, as we can all see, are changing uh, very quickly. So, with that, Mr. Feller. Thanks, Robert. Has President Obama spoken to President Mubarak about these issues? Uh, the, the, let me start by giving you a little bit of a rundown in the President's uh, uh, briefings thus far today. Uh, overnight, he received a memo from the National Security Advisor uh, on the latest situation. Uh, I think you all have been briefed <coughs> on um, the uh, the fact that the President's PDB uh, was uh, about 40 minutes in the Oval Office uh, this morning entirely on the situation in Egypt. Um, we convened not too long ago, about 12.30, uh, a Deputies Committee meeting uh, in the Situation Room uh, run by Dennis McDonough, uh, where we heard directly from uh, Ambassador Margaret Scobie from uh, from Egypt uh, and uh, the State Department and others. Uh, those, that, uh, that briefing was relayed back to the President uh, not too long ago in the Oval Office. Uh, so we have, throughout the process, our Ambassador and others in the government have been in touch with the, uh, with the Egyptian government. Uh, President Obama has not spoken uh, with President Mubarak. Does he have plans to and does he stand, stand by him? Well, uh, we are, uh, again, we're monitoring a very fluid situation. Um, I would point you to what I think we've said over the course of this, Ben, and that is this is not about picking a person uh, or picking the people of a country. Um, and as you heard uh, Secretary of State Clinton say today, we are deeply concerned about the images and the events uh, that we see in Egypt today. Uh, we monitor those events closely. Um, the security personnel in Egypt need to refrain from violence. Uh, protesters should refrain from violence as well. Uh, we've said that throughout this. We think the government, uh, as many of us have said throughout the day, need to turn the internet and social networking sites back on. Um, the legitimate grievances that have festered for quite some time in Egypt have to be addressed by the Egyptian government immediately and violence is not the response. A space has to be created for a meaningful dialogue that addresses again those very legitimate grievances. Our right our belief in their right on the freedom of expression, of association, and of assembly. Um, we have, and I outlined some yesterday, some very specific things uh, that the government uh, uh, must begin to do immediately. Two other quick ones, please. Yes, you say these legitimate grievances have to be addressed. I'm wondering, or what? What can the president do if these matters are not addressed? Well, to? look, first and foremost, this is a, uh, a situation that um, will be solved by, uh, by the people in Egypt. Uh, I will say this, that uh, we, we, sorry, I, uh, uh, we are monitoring closely the situation, as I've said. We will be reviewing uh, our assistance posture based on uh, events that take place in the coming days. Um, so uh, that's certainly part of it, but uh, this is um, this is uh, this will be solved by the Egyptian people. But it is important, and there's a, a very important opportunity for the Egyptian government to address um, again grievances that have. Uh, uh, that have been in place for uh, a number of years. And lastly, from the White House perspective, can you put what's happening today and the last couple of days into context? Do you see this as a crisis that is teetering on something potentially much broader and spreading across the Middle East? Well, um, obviously we're, we're monitoring this um, 
in a number of uh, in a number of places. We've seen uh, we saw what happened in Tunisia. Uh, again, as I said yesterday, I think you have uh, different countries in the region at different stages of uh, of political development, and I, I don't want to generalize across uh, a series of uh, of countries. Yes, ma'am. Um, what does the United States think of the Egyptian military, military sending tanks into the streets, and what do you think the military's role should be? Well, uh, again, I think that, uh, as we have urged repeatedly um, um, for many days, uh, we urge str a strong restraint. Um, this is not a situation that should be addressed with violence. Um, security forces uh, and the military should be restrained uh, in, uh, in anything that they do. There's been reports of clashes between the Egyptian military and the Egyptian police. Have you heard anything about that? Can we I, 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 I don't want to get into or, or I, uh, obviously we're monitoring the situation, so I, I don't have uh, uh, I don't have a account of everything that's happening uh, on the ground. Is what's the United States doing about aid and are are reviewing withholding? As I, as I said a minute ago, obviously uh, we will be reviewing our assistance posture based on uh, based on events uh, now and in the coming days. Uh, yes, Robert. Has the president um, been having any phone conversations at all with other allies? Um, conferring about the situation? Uh, obviously, there have been a, a, a number of meetings uh, throughout the government. There's a, uh, another uh, uh, higher level principals meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning, uh, but I am unaware of uh, any calls uh, at this point that, uh, that have been made. I'm wondering why this message that you are delivering from the podium, or we heard from Secretary of State Clinton earlier today, uh, why the President isn't himself making um, those same comments on, the, on a phone call. I mean, it seems that it would be more powerful if the president can pick up the phone, call yeah. President Mubarak, well, and, and make uh, the same remarks. Yeah, I think it's important to understand that we have, we are in continual contact with, uh, at, at throughout levels of our government with the Egyptian government. So if the president were to make well, that call himself. And, and I think you heard the president speak quite clearly yesterday uh, on this topic. And uh, I think what's also very important is we have not waited for the events of the past several days to bring up our concerns and the concerns of the Egyptian people about, about what I said, association, assembly, freedom of expression, freedom, uh, internet freedoms. Those are discussions that are had uh, at every opportunity when anybody from our government meets with the Egyptian government. When the president last spoke with President Mubarak. Uh, he brought these concerns up. So um, when we spoke in Cairo, these concerns were brought up. So I, I would say only in, in terms of going forward, we continue to monitor uh, a fast-paced situation. And finally, what, what can you kind of talk to us a bit about the role that Egypt has played um, in that region and any concerns at all that this situation, this crisis, uh, could hurt the relationship? Well, look, again, I, I think obvious, you know, we have seen the role that, that uh, on issues like Middle East peace that uh, either in current negotiations or historically the government of Egypt has played. Um, and that's important, but um, there is a responsibility that is had by the government of Egypt, regardless of the role that they have played internationally or regionally uh, over the course of any number of years. Uh, they also have to address the grievances that have built up for those same number of years within the country of Egypt. This is an important opportunity um, to institute concrete and legitimate political reforms 
to address the deep concerns of the Egyptian people um, and make some substantive progress. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. Summer. Robert, why does the U.S. still support countries and <coughs> regimes that we know do not respect human rights like Egypt? Well, again, we have, uh, we have documented, uh, again, the concerns that some have had for quite some time. Uh, as is the case with a country like China, we have uh, a whole host of um, bilateral issues uh, uh, that we deal with countries on. Uh, as we did in the recent trip, there were economic security uh, and basic human rights issues that, uh, that we, we discuss when the president meets with his, uh, his counterparts. Our belief is um, it is important to have those conversations very directly with those leaders. Um, if you walk away from the table of engagement, uh, you can't deliver that message in a face-to-face -face manner. Uh, and the president believes, obviously, that's tremendously important. Um, you have talked about urging restraint. Has that message been communicated from the United States directly to the Egyptian military to refrain from violence, uh, or is it just from the podium? No, uh, it has been communicated not just from this podium, not just in the remarks of the Secretary of State, uh, but at levels uh, within the Pentagon uh, to uh, the Egyptian military, uh, from the State Department, uh, from the words and conversations that have been had by Ambassador Scobie, uh, all levels, um, and, and, all, and also the words, uh, most importantly, of the President yesterday. One last question. Um, do you believe that the time has passed now for Mubarak to make these changes, these political changes that you're calling for? I, uh, absolutely not. I think, uh, I think the people of Egypt want to see uh, clearly and quickly uh, legitimate steps uh, taken toward concrete reforms. Um, the time for that to happen has most certainly come. Yes, sir. Robert, you said that he has not talked to President Mubarak. Has he tried to reach him? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Has there been discussion of trying to reach him? Well, I'm again, guessing. there's a, a, a very fluid situation, and uh, uh, I have no doubt that there are conversations uh, uh, happening uh, as I brief about uh, Egypt on a whole host of uh, levels and issues inside the building. Why is the president not standing where you're standing right now? Uh, well, uh, 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 again, we're monitoring a, a, a very fluid situation, Chip. Well, he talked about it yesterday, but since he talked about it, the situation on the ground has changed pretty dramatically. And uh, I, I don't doubt by the time I finish here, it will have changed more uh, and may several times uh, uh, before we all go to bed tonight. Has there been any discussion of, uh, uh, of uh, concerns expressed by people overseas if they don't hear directly from the president talking into the camera himself? Well, no, I, because I, again, I think you have uh, you have seen a very clear and consistent message uh, across all levels of our government uh, in our interactions with uh, the government in, in Egypt and in Cairo. Uh, the statements that uh, I've made publicly in here and the states that have, uh, messages that have been communicated uh, most recently by Secretary of State Clinton uh, just uh, a few hours earlier. I believe earlier you said we'll be reviewing our assistance posture depending on the events of the next several days. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, I, 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 has that been discussed in the meetings with the President? It has. It has. What kind of uh, change in posture could there be? Are you talking about cutting off aid? Uh, I, let, I, I think at this point I would just leave it to the fact that they're, uh, uh, we are watching very closely uh, the images and events that you're watching uh, and how that uh, could very possibly impact uh, our assistance uh, to Egypt. And is that part of a bigger plan? Is there planning going on now for the possibility that he would be overthrown? We, uh, there, there's a robust set of meetings uh, that uh, are being had to discuss uh, a whole host of issues right now. Is there any contingency like that? Uh, a whole host of meetings that are going on. Uh, deeply concerned, uh, urging restraint. Uh, to this point, 
to my knowledge, uh, no U.S. officials come out and condemn the violence. Is it time to condemn no, the no, violence? I, I, it let's be clear, Mike. It, it, uh, urging restraint and then seeing violence uh, is, is obviously very counter to what uh, we believe should be had, uh, and we would strongly condemn uh, the use of any violence uh, on either side uh, during this situation. Um, absolutely. Um, it, it seemed that you were delayed today because we were waiting to see if Mubarak would have anything to say to his people and perhaps a global audience. Uh, is the White House troubled that he has not come out to our knowledge to say something? Uh, look, I, I, we were delayed uh, for a whole host of reasons, not the least of which I, I wanted to make sure that we have the very best available information as we come out here. Uh, we are uh, we're monitoring any and all actions and words that are that are coming out of uh, coming out of the country uh, and will continue to do so. Isn't this kind of a classic foreign policy dilemma for the U.S. where um, he may not be great to his own people but you have to be worried about who might replace him? Uh, I, I, Mike, I don't think it's uh, uh, I don't think it's a good idea for me to get into hypotheticals. Um, I will say this and it's certainly not hypothetical and that is that uh, the situation uh, should be addressed through concrete reforms. Um, that's what the people of Egypt demand. That's what they deserve. Um, leaders uh, of any country in any region of the world have to be responsive and responsible to the people they govern. Uh, that's certainly true in this instance, and uh, it's true in each and every country around the globe. Robert, is Vice President or Secretary Clinton spoken to uh, President Mubarak? Uh, again, I, I don't have an updated uh, list of calls. I, I, the Vice President has not. Uh, I would refer you to state on, on if anything has happened. Again, it, it, things are moving quite quickly. And can you share with us what world leaders the President has spoken with in the last 24 hours? Uh, again, I, 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 I do not believe that he has spoken in Saudi Arabia, King Jordan, not that nobody I'm, in Asia. The president has not. Again, we, we are we are um, we are in touch at a whole host of levels. Again, I'd refer you to state uh, on some of this um, on on what contacts uh, have been had. Obviously, um, obviously, we're watching this. Your Prime Minister Cameron, yeah. no. has any uh, has any uh, thought been given to pulling our uh, ambassador temporarily? Uh, not that I've heard. Obviously, uh, Chuck, we spent um, uh, some time in the meeting at 12:30 uh, discussing um, the security of the embassy, uh, the security of American citizens inside of Egypt. Um, uh, there are no reports at this point of Americans uh, in distress, but obviously this is an, an ongoing situation that we monitor. The State prepared. Department. Yep, we need to evacuate our sure we're prepared the, the contingencies have been discussed, uh, and obviously there are pre-planning for a lot of that. Uh, you know, is is in the pipeline uh, for a whole host of contingencies. I will say, obviously, that the State Department has issued a travel alert um, to any United States citizen uh, considering. Uh, travel to Egypt uh, and urging people not to pursue uh, non-essential travel to the country. Has the uh, United States, through the ambassador or somebody else, officially condemned the house arrest of Alvarado? Uh, obviously, I, I don't, I don't, I did not hear the ambassador discuss it directly. Obviously, again, this, this goes uh, into, directly into our concern about expression, association, and assembly. He is under house arrest. You guys can guess that you know this is an individual who is a Nobel laureate, who the president has uh, knows and has worked with on a host of nuclear security issues, as the former, uh, as the once head of the IAEA, uh, and uh, these are the type of activities um, that uh, that the government has a responsibility to change. It sounds like we could still hear from the president sometime today. Yeah, Chuck, this uh, the situation uh, as the situation 
changes, uh, all of that will be evaluated. John, you just said that um, if Mohamed al Varane is indeed arrested, that would feed into your concerns. You've spoken of concerns a lot. Why aren't you using the term outrage uh, for some of the things that we've seen? And is there a sense of, equivoc of making an equivocal statement when you talk about violence on one side versus violence on the other? Is it really com comparable uh, well, at this time? This is not a solution that will be solved on either side with violence. I'll be honest with you, Jonathan, I've been out here for three days discussing this issue. Uh, I have not equivocated uh, on uh, the seriousness of the, uh, of the situation. Uh, we have not equivocated on um, our very public uh, posture that, uh, as I said a minute ago, violence is not going to solve this. What will solve the grievances of those that are protesting in, in Egypt is the government addressing those concerns. Free and fair elections uh, is something we outlined yesterday. Uh, we condemned the continuation of emergency law earlier this uh, uh, last year when it was extended. It's been in place for three decades. Uh, that uh, should come to an end, um, but uh, there's uh, no situation that, uh, this is certainly not a situation that will be solved by violence. In fact, um, the, the government's response uh, cannot be violence. The government's response has to be to hear, to understand, and to act on the concerns of its people. One more. Um, apparently, Vodafone, uh, it's a British company, is the company that turned off uh, internet access um, for the people of Egypt. Is there any way or any thought to pressuring Vodafone to put to put that uh, me, network uh, back on? Let me let me take the specific company question um, and, and make sure that I'm clear uh, on uh, on whatever role any company's uh, playing. Uh, obviously, uh, without getting into uh, the individual company, which I'll, I'll check on with NSC, uh, we have a, it is our strong belief that inside of the framework of basic individual rights uh, are, um, are the rights of those to have access to the Internet uh, and to sites uh, for open communication and social networks. Robert, beyond what you've said uh, today about aid, how has it been con conveyed to the Egyptian authorities that billions of dollars in U.S. help could be in jeopardy if, if they don't change their ways? Uh, yeah, I, Pete, I don't, I don't know every conversation that's been had at every level uh, in this government, but uh, suffice to say, uh, this is something that, uh, uh, that, that has been discussed and we're monitoring. And um, okay. do, you, do you see any evidence at all that anything that you've said, the President has said, Secretary Clinton has said, has changed the equation on either side, the government or the protesters? Uh, I, I don't, uh, I'd have to ask for, uh, for an evaluation of, uh, of some of that from, uh, in terms of measuring um, some actions based on media. I do know that the people of uh, the country are watching what is said here. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, again, we see uh, some limited amount of uh, information that, that comes out um, and, and social networking sites before they were shut down, uh, that they are very attuned to um, our words uh, about their individual rights. On the, on the communications question, I know you had that the deputies meeting earlier with the ambassador. Are you guys having a hard time understanding and figuring out everything that's going on in the ground in Cairo and elsewhere, or are you pretty clear on what's happening? Well, we got a, a very thorough rundown uh, from the ambassador uh, who's, uh, who's at the embassy right now. But you're not, the, the, none of these shutdowns in terms of the internet is not affecting your ability to gather information? Uh, we have a, a host of ways to gather information. And then just to follow real quick mm -hmm. on, the, on the aid that you, you're saying you're reviewing, you're, you're confident that prior to you announcing it here, the Egyptians are aware that their aid uh, is under review? I, I, I want to be careful, Hans, that I, I, I don't know every conversation that's been had. Uh, but, but suffice to say, 
uh, I think I was rather clear in what I said. Suffice it to say, could we call it a warning? Uh, no, I, I, it's, uh, uh, again, I think we've been very clear about what needs to happen. Uh, violence uh, in, in any form should stop immediately and grievances should be addressed. Um, we will monitor uh, what is and what has happened um, and future events um, as we undertake a review of uh, our assistance posture. That sounds to me like a warning that if they don't improve their behavior, their assistance will be terminated. I think that if, uh, I think we are watching very closely the actions of the government, uh, of the police, of all the security forces, uh, and all of those in the military. Uh, that their actions may affect uh, our assistance uh, would be the subject of that review. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jack, you have something? Uh, yeah, I wondered if you could give us any information you have about the composition of the protesters, you know, how much of it is, or what proportion of it is Muslim Brotherhood, or... Let, let me see if I can get some guidance on, uh, on that. Obviously, um, you know, we have, uh, look, I, I think you have seen over the past several days, uh, the, um, uh, the manifestation of these grievances express themselves, uh, in protest by, uh, by, I think, what you would consider to be I I the Egyptian middle class uh, in, in the very base concerns that they have about uh, their political reform needs. Uh, but I, I don't have any updated on that. I, I can check and see if there is anything on that. Yeah, you have a change of address, a change of subject? No. Uh, my guess is that this is the predominant subject, but let me, I'll come back at the end of this and see if it, yeah. yes ma'am. Is there any thought that what went on in Tunisia had some impact on this in, in terms of timing, and do you fear that any sparks from the violence in Egypt might affect any other Arab countries? Well, uh, um, again, I, I, as I've said the past couple of days, I don't want to generalize across the region. Uh, countries are obviously, as I've said, at different stages in, uh, in development. Uh, politically, um, but I think it is safe to say that we're monitoring uh, events throughout the world. Thank you, Robert. Um, could you talk a bit about the involvement of the Muslim Brotherhood in this, and should the Muslim Brotherhood be treated as a political party um, with privileges uh, opportunity uh, to? I, I, I do not think this is a. Uh, I do not think that the grievances of the people of Egypt are of a monolithic political belief. Um, I think that it is well documented, and we have documented it, uh, the, the grievances of those who feel they lack the basic individual rights that, that, we've, uh, that we enjoy and that we have enumerated over the past several days. Um, obviously, this is, uh, we, are not, uh, we are not in touch with the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, are you at all concerned about the increased role that the Muslim Brotherhood might play um, in Egypt's political situation as a result? Again, of I, I don't think it is. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, I, I don't think it's a. a I'm not going to get into uh, forecasting uh, uh, in a very fluid and dynamic situation uh, what may happen. I, I, again, I'd refer you to what I said to Peter in that. I think that it would be a, uh, uh, based on what we know, a misinterpretation to believe that a, uh, uh, the events that we have seen are, are based on uh, the beliefs of, uh, of one, uh, just one set of people. Yes, Mark. Thanks. Um, to clarify on the ongoing aid question that keeps popping up, um, most of the aid to Egypt is military aid, right? So when we're talking about aid being reviewed, we're talking about our, us reviewing our military aid. Well, no, I want to be clear that uh, the review would be, um, uh, we, we'd review all of our, our aid to Egypt, 
uh, and I think with I would say within that review is uh, is is military. Uh, and is that review currently ongoing, or are you sort of waiting until things chill a little bit to figure that out? Let's just say uh, it's been discussed, and uh, we are um, we are monitoring uh, events uh, that uh, that could affect that aid. Um, two other quick follow-ups. Um, does this affect our physical military posture in the region in any way that, that you could share with us today? I mean, in what way? US, whatever, U.S. military positioning. Uh, are, do we have concerns where we would need to become involved or reposition U.S. forces in any way? Uh, let me, again, I, I, uh, we discussed embassy security, uh, and we discussed um, – and I think it's safe to say that uh, there ha have always been contingency plans for both embassy security and American citizens that uh, that are in both Egypt and, and, and in, in many countries throughout the world. The We're confined to talking about embassies. Uh, uh, that's all I would talk about publicly, that's for sure. Can I ask you about China? It seems like a leap, and geographically it is, and culturally it is. But um, <laughs> when uh, President Hu was here, um, there was a lot of discussion about human rights and about the need uh, as you become more powerful to consider elements of free society or rule of law, um, is, does the U.S. believe or do you think that China should be concerned in any way about what's happening in Egypt or do you think it's there's such completely different societies and that this is mostly an Arab-Muslim thing at this point? Uh, let, me, uh, let me make sure I understand. Are you talking about our posture toward China no, or, or the sort of... of um, Citizens around the world in, in uh, societies that, that they don't feel are open enough, well, deciding to take to the streets. I, I think that, um, again, I, I think it would be, if I'm not going to generalize across a region, I probably shouldn't generalize uh, across several regions. One yeah. country, not no, 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 I understand, <laughs> but uh, to, to, to discuss this as it relates to one other country would be to do. Uh, would be to dip my toe into the pool of generalization, which uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to do. I will say this. Again, I think um, uh, the issues that the president talked with President Hu of China about and the issues with which President Hu told all of you that there was work to be done, um, th that, that is the case regardless of what happens in any other country in the world. Um, and uh, uh, the president has expressed his concerns about that, and uh, I think you saw those concerns quite honestly expressed by President Hu. Is there any concern that this situation or the free and fair elections you're calling for could produce a government that's less favorable uh, to U.S. interests, and is that a price that you're willing to pay well, for those universal rights to be upheld? Well, let, me, let me be uh, – I want to reiterate, I, I, I don't want to project into the uh, – into the future, uh, I don't think that would be uh, a wise use of my time, given the fluidity of events. I think this is uh, uh, the government of Egypt will be uh, is an is an issue for uh, the people of Egypt. Yes, sir. Looking at the seriousness of this situation, who is the person you are in touch with in Cairo? You say that presidents have not spoken. In all these answers, I couldn't find with whom are you in touch, oh, I, I, except the ambassador in the Mubarak administration. Uh, we are in touch with, uh, again, I don't have a list of every conversation that's been had. Uh, we are in touch with the Egyptian government uh, in throughout entities in, uh, in, in this building and throughout this administration. Uh, the, the Pentagon is obviously in touch with uh, with the military. Uh, the State Department is in touch with, uh, directly with the government and in, in touch with the foreign ministry. Uh, there, again, there are conversations that are had in many different buildings and at many different levels. Yes, ma'am. Um, you have repeatedly said that the U.S. is urging for reform in Egypt. Yes. But uh, concretely, what types of reforms are you urging for? And also, is this realistic? I mean, given that the same regime has been in power there for 30 years. Well. I, I let me. I, I outlined a couple of things yesterday and, and, and repeated them today. Uh, the types of things that we certainly would envision. I, I think, and, and I'll repeat those. Obviously, I mentioned free and fair elections. I mentioned 
uh, our condemnation of uh, the extension of emergency law uh, and that that should be ended. Um, but the grievances of the people uh, have to be addressed directly by the government. And I think there has to be uh, a significant uh, and thorough dialogue uh, to address, again, a whole host of individual rights that the people uh, rightly believe are lacking. So I, I think there has to be a, a, a concrete process that involves, and I, don't, I, I think it's not, uh, would not be uh, something that would be only enumerated from our perspective. It has to be uh, enumerated and addressed directly from the perspective uh, of those uh, in Egypt. Yes. Um, at the moment, this is these stories the whole world is watching. In a similar yes. way, like a few years ago, the whole world was watching Georgia or the Ukraine. At that time, it seemed that there was some international approach to it. Now, this is happening already one week, but you can't tell us that the president or the White House is in contact, let's say, with the most important three or four Western allies to develop a well, strategy, again, uh, a, a common again, uh, strategy in uh, how to react to each other. Well, first and foremost, obviously, we're watching a series of events that are rapidly unfolding and changing. Uh, I have no doubt that things uh, may well have changed uh, in the time in which I've stood up here. Um, uh, again, we have a very robust uh, we have very robust diplomatic efforts, um, and uh, we have contacts and conversations, as I said earlier, uh, in many buildings in this administration with entities throughout the world. I, I, I don't, I, the President has not, uh, has not made uh, specific calls on this at this point, uh, but we continue to monitor the situation. We need a common strategy of the U.S. I mean, the well, U.S. Is we, need a, we need a strategy by the Egyptian government to address the grievances of the Egyptian people. Um, I think the world, uh, and I think several leaders have expressed the same uh, the very same concerns about violence that uh, the President, the Secretary of State, and others have addressed, uh, the Vice President. I, I think that there are uh, the basic and universal rights that have to be um, reformed. Uh, I, I think there's uh, a pretty common response and reaction to uh, the images that we're seeing now. Yes, sir. Much of the demonstration, thank you, Robert, mm -hmm. much of the uh, demonstration in the last few days seems to focus on President Mubarak's apparent attempt to have his son, Gamal Mubarak, succeed him in the elections this year one way or another. Now, you said the President has talked about basic human rights and nonviolence in past conversations with President Mubarak. Has he ever discussed what many feel uh, is a dynastic succession to it. So let me, uh, I, I don't have a direct answer to that, and let me see if there's some guidance on it. And are you following <laughs> the reports about the whereabouts of Gamal Mubarak at all? Uh, we're, we're monitoring the, the events uh, of the entire situation. Yes, Thank sir. you, Robert. Yes, sir. During the meetings today, was the scenario or the possibility of Mubarak being toppled ever discussed or entertained? Uh, not, uh, not, in the, uh, not in meetings that I was in. Uh, again, I think it is safe to, uh, safe to say without getting into uh, a level of detail or granularity that uh, we, uh, we are watching uh, a situation that obviously changes day to day. Uh, and we'll continue to watch and make preparations for um, a whole host of scenarios. Yes, Robert, for a long time Egypt has been a partner in Middle East peace efforts. Uh, I know you said the president has not spoken with other world leaders, but uh, on what level is the administration communicating with Israel, and how might all this affect the Middle East? Uh, yeah, peace I, uh, I again, I, I'm not aware of every conversation that's happened, uh, but uh, I think it is safe to say um, that our uh, both inside of here and, and at the State Department, they have uh, they have talked throughout the region. Can I ask one on another topic? Uh, let's exhaust this before we... Yes, sir. Thank you. Is U.S. or excuse me, is Egypt in danger of losing its 
U.S. financial assistance? Is that uh, are they in jeopardy of losing that? Uh, our, uh, I think that I think the review is based upon their actions. Uh, the the people. Of, let's be clear. The people of Egypt are watching the government's actions. Uh, they have for quite some time, and uh, their grievances have reached a boiling point, and they have to be addressed. Uh, we will watch the actions of the government. I reiterate the urging of restraint uh, <clears throat> for the security forces and for the military. Um, all of that will go into uh, that review. What has to be a decision? Is there a point when you have to make a decision? About uh, again, yeah, it's an ongoing review, so I, I, don't, uh, I don't have an end date. Yes, ma'am. I quite understand your answer about Vodafone. Um, uh, I, I, my answer was I was going to take that question uh, and uh, see if there was any other specific uh, information. I, I, I don't have any information on that, and I will try to gather it. Because, I mean, they're a, they're a company in the UK. No, no, I, 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 that part I did know. Uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, it was uh, you not urge them to, to switch service back on? No, no, no. I, I, I think, again, I, I've, I've been very clear. Uh, we have been very clear the President was clear on this yesterday. The Secretary of State was clear on this today. Uh, PJ and I have both spoken on this. We believe in the basket of individual freedoms includes uh, the freedom to access the Internet uh, and the freedom to, uh, to use social networking sites. Uh, I, I, I don't want to speak about the specific company because I, I need a little bit more information regardless of uh, Regardless of any situation, we believe that the people of Egypt uh, have a right to um, freedom of expression and freedom of speech, and that includes the use of the Internet. I think, I think what the concern is, that what's coming across is that you're, you're tempering your concern with Can wanting... I just be clear? Can I be clear? Yeah. Is there anything that I could say that would be more clear than that the people of Egypt have, should and have full access to social networking sites and the internet, that the people of Egypt should have their concerns about freedom of expression, assembly and association addressed directly by their government. I, I'm not tempering uh, one word or one syllable of one word in what has to be done by the people, by, by the government of Egypt to address the concerns of the people of Egypt. That means that the government were to fall? I don't think I could be clearer. <laughs> I don't think the people of Egypt could be clearer. We've reached a point where the grievances of those have to be addressed in concrete reforms. Have to. Must. Unequivocal. Yes, sir. Robert, uh, you said that the the administration is reviewing the uh, assistance posture. On what criteria is that review being hinged? What are the criteria? The events that we're watching. And, yeah. uh, Robert, you, you've spoken several times. Oh, right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and you, there, there has not been direct contact between the two heads of state. Is that because uh, Mubarak is unwilling or unavailable for that contact? Uh, not that I'm aware. Yes, Robert, you've spoken several times about how you're watching the events that are fluid. Is there any interest of, of the president uh, to intervene and use his influence to, to change the course of those events, to, to quell the violence? Well, uh, I think he, uh, I, I think that was, uh, I think that was apparent in what he said yesterday. I mean, he was clear on what the government shouldn't do, and what, he was clear on what the government needed to do. Um, so uh, I, I think the Secretary of State's been clear on that. Uh, I think the Vice President's been clear on that. Did you have a follow-up on something? Like that? Let's do a couple more, and then I'll. Uh, yeah. One is in connection with Egypt. Uh, ever since the presidential visit to India in November, if President has spoken with the Prime Minister of India, as India just celebrated the Republic Day of India, Indian Prime Minister is also worried about uh, the events in Egypt because of. Uh, 
the good relations with India and also hundreds of thousands of Indians there. Uh, I, the president, to, to my knowledge, has not spoken with Prime Minister Singh. Second, as far as presidential address to, to the union the other day, it came to surprise around the globe. The people were surprised when the president said that uh, China is now ahead of uh, supercomputer, once the uh, U.S. was the leader, and also in uh, solar power. What people are asking now is China has compromised the U.S. security as far as uh, leading in uh, uh, supercomputers and all or what? Well, let's be clear. The, I think let's be clear. We, 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 as the president said in his speech, need to take uh, we need to take important steps to win the future. We need to out innovate and out build and out educate any of our competitors. Um, I, I don't think people should be confused about the size of our economy and the size of their economy. Our economy is three times the size of the Chinese economy with a quarter of its people. Uh, we, uh, uh, we again, we need to. We need to take steps because, as you've heard the president say a number of times, people in one state in this country aren't competing against um, people the next town over or, or two states away. It's a global economy, and we have global challenges. Uh, and I think the president addressed and, and outlined many of them, and, uh, uh, and over the course of the, the coming weeks and months, we'll outline specific plans to address them. Yeah, I just want to, could you just talk real quick about Jay, what he brings to the position, what differences we'll see, and what sort of, I guess, if there's a message that, that comes with the... You know, I, 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 let me just, I'll do this quickly, I, because I get back to uh, the situation in Egypt. Look, I, I think, as I've said, I think Jay is uh, tremendously smart. Uh, I think Jay is, uh, is extraordinarily hardworking. Uh, he's done a terrific job for the vice president. Uh, I think you need two things to do this job well. I think you need to have the confidence of the president and the team in the White House, and you need to have the access uh, which gives you the ability to do the job and answer questions. I don't think there's any doubt that Jay has, uh, uh, has each of those um, abilities, and uh, I think will be terrific at what he does. Uh, actually, that was what I was going to ask, but let me get two follow-ups on that. Uh, are you any closer to, now that the announcement's been made, on saying when you'll hand over the duties to them? Again, I, I anticipate transitioning out of here sometime in mid-February. And secondly, can you explain the President's thinking at all beyond the two things you just named in being the first President to name a, since Gerald Ford, to name a reporter to the job? Is he oh, something, he some skill in there he thinks is uh, <laughs> transferable? <or? laughs> Thousand jokes just flashed in my head, George. And I think uh, I think the uh, I think given the nature of this briefing, I should probably holster each of those thousand jokes, and uh, we'll discuss this later. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let, let me do this. Let me, I, yeah. Let me um, let me do this. And I think that's a very important point. Um, let Let us go back now and see sort of where we are. Uh, and we will keep in touch with you. If you have questions, um, send them our way. Obviously, uh, this is Ben's last day, and we've made it a particularly busy one. He will go back over to the State Department, don't worry. Uh, so, um, obviously, uh, Ben, Dennis, Tom, uh, Ben Chang, Tommy Vitor, myself, uh, we will endeavor to uh, let you know as much as we know uh, throughout this process. Let, let me go back and look at our at our scheduling as to when we might want to try to do this uh, a little bit later today. Mike, did you have something for us? Does the U.S. know for sure where President Mubarak is? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. I, 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 uh, I have no information that he's not. Thanks.